Good morning everyone, this is Les and this is my winter prelim video forecast 2011-2012. I just have some thoughts that I put together in a video here talking about what I think may happen this upcoming winter. This is not my official forecast, but it is some early thoughts that I've had. And we're going to be talking about in this video the pattern for 2011. What's been going on this year? What conditions do we have leading up to the upcoming winter? Analog years and maps, we're going to talk about some of uh, past years that have had similar conditions to what we've seen this year. And I've got a whole bunch of things to talk about there. This is a big section that's going to take up most of the video. And then at the end, my early thoughts. I have spelled out what I think may happen from November through March uh, as we get into winter time. So what is, what's happened so far this year? I've had a cool wet spring. Uh, we can remember the uh, August of the or uh, April rather of this spring when we had the record-setting rainfall. We had a very cool wet spring. A lot of farmers couldn't get their crops in early. Um, I know I didn't get my crops in until later on in May, which I generally have in early May, but that you know, was a few weeks behind. And then look what happened during summer. We turned much warmer than average when we got into July a lot of the precip was more scattered some parts of the tri-state are still in a little bit of a drought especially Indiana and Kentucky and then we flipped to fall thanks to the tropics come September so we've got cooler weather now we've been seeing better precip chances uh, as of recently so that's kind of what's been happening for 2011 it's been a year of extremes that's for sure and um, I expect that to continue going forward now here's what we've done in terms of temperatures from January through August of this year. You can pretty much see uh, uh, warmer than average for Texas, way warmer, and we know why, thanks to the drought. Southeast has been above average. Pretty much average to slightly below average for the Ohio Valley, uh, if you average everything out this year. But the Great Lakes, Northern Plains, and the West have pretty much been cooler than average for most of the year. Uh, the West didn't really have a summer. Um, that's pretty much what's been going on. Precipitation, now this is showing above average for the Ohio Valley, if you can remember, thanks to spring. Uh, we had a very wet spring, but that's why we had that storm track. You know, that just hammered us all spring. No surprise here for Texas, and really no surprise for the Southeast, although the Southeast is getting help now. And here is the criteria that I use for analogs this winter. The Pacific Decadal Oscillation, we've been in a negative phase for a while now. And we did flip over to positive, weekly positive last winter, and now it's back to pretty strongly negative now. So I went back and looked at years that fit that criteria. QBO, and when it's negative, remember that helps with blocking. Well, it was negative last winter, then it kind of went to positive late in the spring through the midsummer and it's starting to go back to negative now in the fall it's kind of flipping back the other way so I looked at years where that happened uh, the soy if it's negative that usually means a lot uh, El Nino if it's positive usually means a La Nina a couple winters ago we did have an El Nino and we had a La Nina last winter and we're going into another La Nina for this winter so it's been pretty much positive ever since and I looked at years that supported that notion now, this is an important one for ENSO. We're going to have back-to-back -back La Niñas. We had the strong Niña last winter, neutral for the summer, and now it's back to a weak Niña right now with the potential to go into moderate, as I talked about in my fall video, this winter. So I looked at uh, winters where this occurred, where we had back-to-back -back La Niñas. And then everybody still knows that we do have a weak sun, we are in a solar minimum, so I pick, picked a few years where the solar uh, sunspot count where we didn't have a lot of solar activity the sunspot count was low so I picked a few years for that and here's my list of analog years as you can see briefly and I'm just gonna quickly highlight some of the ones that matched in a lot of categories these two let me circle these first now as you can see since I've circled a couple of these 1909 1910 we had a solar minimum going on that year um, the ENSO was a, a lot of La Nina going on. We had back-to-back -back La Ninas. Um, we didn't really have back-to-back -back La Ninas those winters. Uh, I apologize because I would have listed it in my ENSO if we did. But the soy matched up rather well 
so that's why I included it and we were certainly in the negative phase of the decadal oscillation for the PDO and um, that fit really well also and then some other years that I used was uh, and I'm going to show you all this on the next slide but those years really stood out to me more but I'm just going to let you look at, look at the years real quick before I move on okay let's move on to the years that I did use and this is why again I just explained 1909-1910 that was for the PDO soy and solar they all matched well that was threw out of my five categories same thing for 1916-1917 those were cold winners too and again those three same criteria met now 73-74 I used that because of the soy and I put that under ENSO too, even though I didn't list it on the other page. It did match up well when I looked back at ENSO, and I should have included that on the other slide, but I'll just include it here. 1987-1988, the QBO and the SOY matched well. 2007-2008, the PDO and the ENSO matched well. So that's why these are my core analog years. So let's see what happened. 1909-1910 for that winter, it was pretty cold for most of the country, as you can see here precipitation it was uh, above average for the Ohio Valley into the mid-Atlantic and you can see it was drier than average for Texas and the southeast now if you remember that 2011 map that I had for precipitation at the beginning of this video kind of looks a little similar doesn't it let's go to 1916 1917 for temperatures you can see uh, warmer again over Texas and the southeast for temps and uh, and uh, otherwise it was pretty much cold for three quarters of the country especially across the north again typical with La Nina precipitation pretty much normal for most of the country but it was below average for Texas though which does correlate well with my thoughts temperatures for 73 74 you can probably see a little more of a southeast ridge influence there since the positive Temperature departures to take up more real estate over the southeast in Ohio Valley up into the mid-Atlantic. But again, there's a theme, cold over the northern plains again. And you can see precipitation again, Ohio Valley about average, a little bit above average toward northwest. Southeast had a pretty wet winter, which I was surprised to find out. I thought it might have been dry, but it wasn't. And New England was pretty much wet. Typical with La Nina for the Pacific Northwest to be wet also. Okay, 87, 88 for temperatures, pretty cold winter in most of the country. And precipitation again, there's that corridor just toward southwest, but you can see a little bit of a southeast ridge there, and, or maybe a ridge could have been out here too um, along the coast. So that's again another theme, but you can tell we had a plus P and A that winter because we did have a ridge over the west since it was pretty much drier than average there. 2007-2008, uh, pretty much average for the Ohio Valley, again, uh, a little bit above average in portions of Texas and the Mid-Atlantic, and the Northern Plains again, cold. Now, can you see the patterns as I've been going through these? Look at the precip, Ohio Valley again, whammo, on into New England, there's the dry Texas and a little bit dry in parts of the southeast. So can you see the pattern here where we should be average to slightly below average if you smooth all these together? Well, we're going to do that right now. If you smooth all those analog years together, there's the Ohio Valley. We're average to, or average to slightly below average depending on your location. There's the Northern Plains again. Very, very cold. Precipitation. A dry Texas. A dry portions of the southeast. There is the wetness. Ohio Valley again through New England. So that's where the storm track could be this winter. And that matches up with my analog years uh, pretty darn well. Now, my early thoughts on winter is uh, below average temps overall for the Ohio Valley with above normal snowfall. I also think that based on past temperature and precip data for those analog years that I've shown, I went to the University of Utah's climate website. And you can do a Google search on that. And I looked at CVG's data, which was from 1948 to present. And I looked at that and... Um, through some of those analog years that I had where I had the temperature and precip data. Um, a lot of times in uh, mid to late October, we did have our first flakes, or some years it was into early November. So that could be uh, potential here where we could see first flakes. 
during that period. Second half of November as whole, we kind of flipped a little bit milder conditions around the mid middle part of the month there. We had a little bit of an Indian summer, and then some years the cold came back toward the end of the month, and other times it waited until early December. December was pretty cold and snowy on most of those years. And then if we continue this, um, the cold continued from December into the first part of January. There were some pretty good snowstorms in early January there, but then we had a middle to late month thaw. And sometimes that continued into early February, sometimes it didn't. As you can see, for February, the years were mixed. Some were cold and snowy, others were warm and wet. So I didn't really get to get a good analog for February. It kind of went either way, depending on the atmospheric conditions at the time. And then winter did come back in most of those years from March with below normal temperatures. And we had average to above average snowfall. Some of those years, well, you remember the March blizzard of 2008, obviously. But a lot of those analog years that went way back that I looked at, we had mid to late March. Uh, around the middle of the month, sometimes 22nd to the 27th, late March there, um, we even had some 3, 4, 5 inch snowfalls. And we averaged 4 inches of snow for March. So it looks like winter started out strong, you had a little bit of a break in the middle, and then the back end, some years it came, some years it did not, but March. Just when you thought spring was coming, a lot of times March was cold and wet. So it's kind of like last spring. where We had a delayed cold, wet spring. That's what we saw this year. I think we'll see the same again in 2012 as well. And finally, my next update I will have out is my final winter weather outlook where I have more detailed temperature and precip maps and a snowfall map for the Ohio Valley. I'll spend a little more time making my own maps here and we'll touch more on uh, ENSO, on what the models are showing, what the climate models are showing for the upcoming winter. I'm going to go uh, more into that. These are just some early quick thoughts that I put out uh, for right now, but I'm going to go into a lot more in depth on what I think will happen for the upcoming winter, and I'm going to put that out in another video sometime between October the 17th and the 19th, somewhere in that period is when I hope to release that. So stay tuned there. All right, I want to thank everybody once again for watching my uh, winter pre preliminary video forecast for 2011-2012. Hope everybody enjoyed it, and I look forward to making another video for you, as I said, in mid-October for my final winter weather outlook. So enjoy the nice fall-like weather, and take care, everyone.